If you have ever wondered where the phrase jack-o'-lantern and the carving of the jack-o'-lantern comes from, stay tuned because we're getting spooky and I'm about to show you. Happy Whimsical Wednesday, y'all. You were watching The Real Ray, and I am Ray. I am a cosmetologist, beautician, a hairdresser, therapist, whatever you wanna call me, that's me. But Wednesdays are not for that. Wednesdays are for whimsy and whatever shenanigans we feel like talking about. And it's October, so we are being spooky whimsical this week, this month on Wednesdays. Okay, so I was thinking it would be fun today to maybe carve a little pumpkin and talk about where the jack-o'-lantern came from. And I went old school with my pumpkin, and by old school I just mean how we did pumpkins growing up, which was with a permanent marker, no fancy fancy cutouts. And it was pretty fun and sweet and simple, and I picked out a small one, so. I hope you enjoy watching that. I also have some tricks um, that I'll tell you at the end for preserving your pumpkin longer once it is carved. So just stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, let's get started talking about the jack-o'-lantern. So for centuries now, people have been carving pumpkins. You've probably carved a few pumpkins yourself and it the best origin story or the one that had the most explanation that I could find was the Irish version. So it all starts with Stingy Jack and Stingy Jack was a prankster and kind of like a drunk and so he's just kind of like the town right. So he makes, he invites the devil out for a drink one day and the devil says that he will pay for his drink in exchange for his soul. Stingy Jack agrees to this, but when the devil turns himself into a coin to pay for the beverage, Jack takes the coin and puts it in his pocket next to a silver cross. And when he did that, it trapped the devil there. And so basically, old stingy Jack just kind of kept the devil hostage for a while until he would agree to leave him alone for a year and then also once he died he had made the devil promise not to collect his soul. So the devil agrees to this whatever um, and stingy Jack lets him out and all that. So fast forward to that like a year later and somehow I guess the devil's come to collect his due. Um, they end up at like an apple tree together and Jack has convinced the devil to go up into the tree and bring him an apple down. And I don't really even understand how Jack is so smooth and can get the devil to do things, but whatever. So the devil goes up there and while he's up there, Jack carves into the tree a, like the symbol of a cross. So now the devil can't come back down until he's made an agreement with Jack once again. And so this time the terms are to just like leave him alone for 10 years, whatever. So the devil comes down, everybody moves on with that business. And sometime between then and 10 years from then, something happens to Jack and Jack passes away. So he's at the pearly gates trying to get in, but he has not lived a great life. So God will not let him in. They send some packing. They don't want those sort of shady characters in heaven. So he scoots on down to hell and the devil is keeping his, his promise and will not accept him into hell and sends him out into the night, into the dark, with only a burning coal to light his way. So Jack puts the burning coal into a turnip he carved up and that works as his lantern. Jack has his lantern, which is the, the burning coal and the turnip, and he is still roaming the earth 
to this day with his little totem. Maybe he's upgraded to a pumpkin, who knows. So that is where that comes from. Jack of the Lantern is what uh, people start calling this ghouly figure roaming around, which then kind of gets shortened into Jack O'Lantern. And so people start carving up turnips and potatoes. Remember, we're in Ireland right now. So they'll put their carved turnip, turnips or potatoes that have spooky faces on them in their windows and near their doors in hopes of spooking off Stingy Jack or other uh, evil spirits. So this, this scoots on over to England where they use beets. And then as people immigrate to America, they find pumpkins which are native to the land. And I can only imagine how much easier it is to carve a pumpkin versus all of those other fruit vegetables. So there you have it. That is what a jack-o'-lantern is. Let me know in the comments below if you've heard this before or if you have a different story, keep me posted. Okay, y'all, so as promised, here are a couple of tips on how to preserve your pumpkin post carving. Put your pumpkin in a um, bleach bath, sort of. It's really mostly water with a dollop of bleach. So per gallon, you want a tablespoon. So what I did is I just filled my bucket up enough to cover my pumpkin and just did a little maybe splash of bleach and let it sit for about 20 minutes. And what that does is cleans it and will get all the stuff off. So hopefully it won't mold. And this is the first time I've done this before. So the internet, I checked several different websites. They're pretty confident that it works. And then also keeping your pumpkin hydrated. So get you a spray bottle and do um, like a teaspoon per quart of water of bleach and just spritz it daily. Well, another thing you can do is bring it inside and put it in the refrigerator during the daytime. For me, that's just like seven steps too many, but it probably would be a good idea on, especially like those really hot days we have here in Alabama to like maybe bring them inside if you think about it. The yeah, extreme temperatures are not great for pumpkin preservation. So don't use a real life candle. If you can use like um, an LED light up in there, some glow sticks, because the heat of the actual flame will melt the inside of your pumpkin faster. So if you're gonna do that and not use a real candle, then you can coat the outside with petroleum jelly and it's supposed to keep it hydrated, but also not um, get moldy and gross. But if you're gonna use a candle, don't do that because petroleum jelly is flammable. And that is it for my pumpkin preserving tips and tricks. I hope that y'all enjoyed this episode of Whimsical Wednesday. And I will see your beautiful faces next week. Keep me posted on content requests and how you're enjoying it. And I want to know how your pumpkin carving went and what your favorite way to carve your pumpkin is. Please let me know. Don't forget to hit that like button if you're enjoying it and subscribe and hit that bell. And I will see your beautiful faces next week. It's the real ray. Bye.